Hey all, welcome back to another NGS video. This week's update is coming on and nothing really major got added. Yes, we have Nex terrorizing South Alia during thunderstorms, but other than waiting around for it to spawn, there's not much to do. So what's there for a board player other than hanging out in the lobby? Well, I've got a list of things that can be done either solo or with a group of friends. Before I get into that, for those who are new here, my name's Anne and I make NGS videos every week. I look through more of a techer point of view, but I'm also working on a PSO2 story series that ties in well with something we'll talk about later. I also stream on Twitch every Friday night. Link for that's in the description below. If you'd like to see more content as it comes out, I'd appreciate hitting that subscribe button. With all the intro stuff out of the way, let's get into the video. There's been plenty of words said and ink used lamenting the current state of NGS content, or lack thereof. I feel the same way as most of the big content creators in that the game's core is great, but give content, Sega. I believe it was Chrono that said one of the early ideas given to Sega was to release NGS as a open beta of sorts and keep going with base PSO2, and I think that's basically what happened, except Sega left some of the details off and decided to put PSO2 on autopilot too early. Because of this, players have basically written base PSO2 off, but that's where the meat of the game is still going to be. This is also going to be where a chunk of these ideas come into play, since the new influx of players haven't seen a lot of what's out there. With that, I offer 10 ideas to keep that spark going for PSO2 and NGS. Idea number one, solo challenges. Looking at YouTube, there are very few tech or speed runs. There are one or two of the Bujin Cocoon, but otherwise that's it. Try optimizing your gear to get a sub one minute time on it, or maybe see how fast you can solo Pettis Vera next time it passes through. I attempted my first Pettis solo run and got it down in 25 minutes with only one plus 40 unit. Now that my gear is better than before, I plan on practicing more and probably tossing it on here when I feel decent about the run as a random video, like if I wanted to upload the two concerts I have stashed away. Idea number two, burn through the base PSO2 story. There's a campaign going on right now that offers a number of emotes, weapon camos, and tickets for the base PSO2 SG Scratch. This also provides a non-repeatable source of star gems, as you can earn some through titles, primarily when running hardcore mode. The only problem is there's only two weeks to get it all done, and it'll be nearly impossible for a more casual player to devote enough time for it. There is one way to get the best of both worlds, though. If you escape out of the cutscenes, focus only on the main tasks, and stick to the casual setting, you may be able to get it done in time. But how do you get the story after? Go back through it later, or watch the story in the nutshell series that I'm currently working on. I'll most likely have episode 2 done next week, but episode 1 in its long list of this is this person is already up. One thing to note, though, is even on casual, it'll take a bit for new players, since it does require you to advance in levels along the way. But that leads into the next option. Idea number three. Level up a base PSO2 class to level 100. Do you have all six classes leveled up to 20 and sitting in the lobby? Why not do it all over again? Base PSO2 has 12 different classes, with four locked behind getting two classes up to level 75. Those who are just starting off have access to the same six classes in NGS, along with Braver, Bouncer, and Summoner. I personally played Bouncer Hunter for a good chunk of PSO2, but dabbled in most all of the other classes. The easiest way to do this is to follow your main mission list, and if you get to a point where you're stuck, you can use the fourth recommended quest to help push a little farther. Most all the quests are decent, but I'd personally pass on Chaos Render of Tranquility and Silence Born of Chaos when they come up, as the amount of time you'd put into it isn't worth it in the end. Idea number four, farm up star gems. Did you know with a little bit of work you could get a good chunk of star gems? The easiest way to do it is spending a few minutes at the casino and turning in 1k coins for 10 SG. If you have more time to play, there's an option to earn another 6 5 star gem tickets, but they cost 1700 coins each. It's an easy 40 star gems per week if you're willing to put the time into it and earn the 11.2k casino coins. You can also talk to the metal barter to trade in buster medals from buster quests for up to 100 star gems per week. You can get the same amount from the battle coin barter by doing some PvP. These last two might have a longer wait time, but it should be easy enough to get done with a few hours of work. Also falling into this category is the previously mentioned story titles. If you get a good enough group, you can also earn up to 250 star gems from Challenge Mode 3 rankings, and player quarter visits can net you some SG as well, if you have enough people wandering. Finally, either finding red crates or completing the weekly time attack quest will give you some based on how many or how fast you go. Player quarter, rare crates, and time attacks can all be checked on the Visiphone. Idea number five, check out old content in general. I'm getting my group of friends together the day this comes out on stream for a trick-or-treat trigger, since I'm itching for some chaos with some Tom Jones belting it out in the background. The seasonal triggers will need help from veteran friends, but the story-based EQs are as easy as looking it up in the bad shop. Other areas would be to try out the Divide quest, go harpooning for Barlodos, aka Money Snake, See if you can try and beat Phalag, Mask, or even Solo Sodom. If you want the true PSO2 endgame experience, try augmenting on a day other than PSO2 day and cry in agony that Sega would ever have a system with a 10% chance of success that cost millions of Meseta if you flipped the wrong coin. Idea number six, Cradle of Darkness. 
Wonder how you could even think to afford those 9 digit prices on the PSO2 player shop? Just Farm Cradle. The pre-NGS time sync becomes the post-NGS time sync, where you run ultra hard, turn on auto link for 13 star items, and hope Storage Chan will forgive you when it goes from empty to overflowing. How do you convert all that gear into Meseta? First convert them to X cubes, then go to the cube exchanger, turn them into grinders, and then sell the grinders to the item shop. After about 20 runs, you'll most likely have at least one class at level 100, enough Meseta to buy a little something, and regret your last 10 hours of decisions while letting your ears and eyes recover. Idea number 7. Become a Shutterbug. Take pictures of your favorite areas and you might just make your new favorite wallpaper. If you're on PC, check out Reshade and G-Shade. The latter tends to be more popular due to its ease of use, but they both take some getting used to. Both can also be used to make some amazing shots of your character. Of what? Well, that moves on to the next idea. Idea number eight, fashion. Odd to think that the old joke, fashion is the true end game, has become more and more accurate while we wait for things to do beyond Gigas. There's eight years of outfits and accessories that exist in some form, with the only issue being that you can't mix and match clothes with the new ones. All hair and accessories are usable on both body types, which allows for options with future releases. Body paints can only be used on either old or new type bodies, depending on which one they're made for, along with makeup and eyes for faces, but those limitations can still be worked around. There's also the cosplay of both out-of-game characters and in-game characters like Matoy, Persona, and Patia, to name a few, which ties into the next idea. Idea number 9. Make alts. All players get three free character slots, and it's a good idea to use all three slots. It used to be that you'd get stuck to the same name, race, and gender, but with NGS the only thing you're beholden to is the name. Why should you have three characters? Segals sometimes give out things at the character level, mainly skill reset passes. You used to be able to farm Meseta with weeklies, and you still can in base PSO2, but with NGS it's become account-wide instead of character. Another reason is to have a melee, a ranged, and a tech character. This allows you to have one set of armor for each character, and the augments can be tailored to that class type. Of course, bravers and bouncers are the odd ducks in PSO2, and will most likely be the same in NGS, since they're melee ranged and melee tech hybrids, respectively. I personally have seven characters on ship 3 and one on ship 2, and I've been working on getting through them slowly, just as something to do. I have the general carrot of get to level 20, but as much as I grumble about having to do on each character, progressing through story is much more manageable goal than grind your brains out until you hit 20. Finally, idea number 10. Try other games. Those who used to play on the JP side of things are familiar with this, but for those of us on Global, we're used to that constant fire hose of content blasting us for most of the last year, only calming down once we got into episode 6. While we had two weeks to get things done before the next UQ or event drop, JP had months between content. Ask people that have been playing for a long while what they've done for the year prior to Global's launch, and it'll probably be Divide Quests. Players on that side of things were used to popping into PSO2 once a week or so, then moving on to something else. Use the downtime to check out things that are coming out, like Pokemon Unite, Monster Hunter Stories, Final Fantasy XIV, or Sports Ball 2021, only updated the roster's edition. Maybe there was something you missed while chasing after Persona, like Last of Us Part II, Death Stranding, Ghost of Tsushima, Paper Mario, Genshin Impact, <gasps> Quick Serve Delicious 3, Spider-Man, Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity, Cyberpunk 2077, Super Meat Boy Forever, or anything on Xbox Game Pass. And that was all second half of last year. Just make sure you hit that subscribe button. That way you know if anything major comes out and need to set things aside like the old days. So now I ask you the question, what are you doing when you play? Any tips you use to keep the spark alive? Let me know in the comments below. If you want to see how I keep busy, check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash every Friday night. Otherwise, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.